Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, a look at yesterday's terrible storms, a seismic uptick, and news from here to cosmology. We're going to start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. The last 24 hours, you see the coronal holes departing and incoming. Bright umbral magnetic fields over on the right are departing and still don't actually have any sunspots beneath them. We're monitoring that large plasma filament incoming north of the coronal hole. There was a gorgeous dance of them around the limbs. Just pick a side, doesn't matter which, it was amazing to watch. Now let's come to the solar wind where only slight intensifications of the stream have occurred. Certainly no major stream and for those with the disaster prediction app, the last four days saw a forecast of the end of the seismic drought based on solar polar magnetic fields and elevated earthquake risk alerts as well due to these coronal holes. Well, we are well connected to them now and the uptick has begun. Last day, we had three above average quakes, two of them hitting 6.0 with the Mexican event striking their low velocity zone there, a blot echo. Let's go next to the atmosphere where the U-shaped cloud line from yesterday transformed into a snake. The monsoon exploded over the southwest, and unfortunately the convective atmospheric potential energy in the Midwest spent the afternoon making major connections to the ground. Hearts and thoughts to those in Iowa where all of those twisters fell. Here is what it looked like on satellite. It came hard and fast, zooming in on the lightning here too for the hours spanning the disaster. Shifting next to the strongest storm on Earth, developing further on approach to China, first hitting the islands between Taiwan and Japan. By the end of the day, it will be there and looking north-northwest for its primary landfall. Two incredible Mars dust stories out today. First from Marcy, showing the extent of the dust storm taking place there. Normally, she gives us clear views, which are not happening so often right now. Meanwhile, the Mars Express snapped this shot of a colossal dust storm sweeping across the landscape much more zoomed in. Taken from space, this implies a nearly unimaginable wall of dust. Speaking of the imagination, more from Lux on the hunt for dark matter. Based on the day and year changes in Earth's orbit and position around the sun, facing the heavens, Variations in the electron recoil detected by the experiment would implicate a dark matter modulation even if they couldn't find the particle itself. Sort of a brilliant move with the goose egg on the board for dark matter, however phantoms fly from following through here as well. No such rate modulation exists. Last night we posted an update on the Beaufort Gyre exploration missions. Woods Hole and Dr. Proshatinsky were kind enough to share that signals of Yale's cold climate bomb are showing and that in September later this year they will go to the gyre and see if it has indeed reversed. Definitely don't miss last night's update. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.